When it comes to smoking meat, most people instantly go for what's become very fashionable, which is the low and slow barbecue smoking. Um, I define this as indirect hot smoking. So you're cooking it in a oven, either with charcoal or wood, and played around with everything, kettle, drums, pellet grill smokers, offset. You're basically cooking it with some smoke going into it and it's it's really based around the fat content of the meat because the fat is rendering down and then it's just like getting everything nice and juicy however there's a lot more to it so the way i write about it on the blog is like you smoke for flavor and obviously that is the hot smoking low and slow smoking or what i would call uh, direct hot smoking so with this, you've got the heat coming up, your wood underneath a tiny little grill here, and then fish, sausage, chicken, whatever. So you've, you're creating a chamber where the heat's coming straight through and the smoke. So you don't have to use a lot of wood with this. A lot of wood just generally makes a bitter aftertaste. Less is more when it comes to using one of these portable smokers. These are really good for starting off. I've never used one inside, I've always used it in the backyard. I might do an experiment on the channel, trying to run one of these with the exhaust going on full and see if, a, if the fire alarms go off. But when I catch trout and there's some other ocean fish I bring in, this is just a great way, salting it lightly overnight, letting it dry out so the pellicle forms which means uh, the proteins on the outside of the meat kind of bind together a little bit. And then the smoke vapor will adhere to it a bit better. So that's, that's one way. I've actually put some wild venison in here that have been pickled, more of a sort of acidic type of brine. And then I've had success at very slowly monitoring the temperature a bit and having the gas really on low, but getting a bit of um, smoked pastrami venison pastrami was beautiful so really if you think about it you've got your hot smoking direct hot smoking indirect which would be low and slow barbecue for instance and then cold smoking cold smoking can be done for flavor as well you can cold smoke um, you know a whole bunch of things salt chocolate nuts vegetables i've tried mushrooms and aubergines and it, you can bring it at smoky tomatoes and then you make like a tomato sauce or so you've got like the non-meat options as well so you really have smoke for flavor and then you have smoke for preservation and flavor that's kind of like the way i see it you could say that then you have smoke just for preservation but it's not really, you're just drying it out. Um, cold smoking, which is in, just done under 30 degrees Celsius, or I'll put Fahrenheit down here because I can't remember. I think it's 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold smoking um, is really just drying meat with cold smoke around it. And that once it's cured, it's like that. Or you can just like, dry a steak out a bit on the surface uh, with a light bit of salt seasoning and then cold smoke it for three, four, five, six hours. Leave it overnight, next day cook it up and it should, it should have a bit of smokiness to it. Cured meat that is cold smoked and then kind of dried and cold smoked. So um, that also would be the cured and brine side of say smoked herrings and sardines very popular across Europe and the United Kingdom I also use the cold smoking a lot for salamis like a lot of Eastern European style dry cured salamis I cold smoke a Hungarian salami for I'll show you a picture here three days or like three six eight hour sessions so yeah, there's a lot what you can do with smoking meat and how you smoke it, hot or cold smoking. Really, if it's under 30 degrees Celsius, 86 degrees Fahrenheit or over it, 
However, when I'm smoking things like cheese and eggs and that kind of thing, cold smoking them, I'll generally like to go for half of that. The smoke generator, uh, this is something I've been playing around with for years and years. This one is the original invented in New Zealand called Smoke Kai, because Kai in New Zealand is a word, from, indigenous Māori word for food. So Smoke Kai, and it basically has a separate, creates a separate chamber, uses a venture, venturi effect to pump air. You have a little pump that's variable so you can control it. And, um, but I use it for cold smoking and hot smoking because I can just stick this on the side of my gas grill barbecue and turn it into a smoker instantly. But uh, on a wine barrel, drum, kettle, pellet grill, you get about, this is uh, one litre, so call it one kilo, so about two pounds. And this would last, oh, I don't know, probably about four, five, six hours. I use the pellet tube smokers, which burn along um, in a perforated bit of metal. But I sort of prefer this because you get a bit more control over what you're doing. And uh, yeah, it's a good little machine. So if you wanted to start and use like cold smoking just to flavor some things, like cheese is a bit of a thrashed one on YouTube and online, but even like salt, nuts, um, any type of dairy, I've done cream and then made a scallop potato dish with layers of uh, potato and then with a smoked cream or milk and then a little bit of egg mixture and nutmeg, cinnamon, salt, pepper, delicious. So hopefully this was helpful. I'll put a few links just below to some of my articles on my blog, eatcuredmeat.com. Thanks for watching. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos, so see you next time. Cheers.